Hello everyone, what's up? In this Warhammer basing tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint a ruined temple base like this amazing resin base by MicroArt Studios. More specifically, I will cover the process in three parts. Part 1, base coating. Part 2, secondary colors. And part 3, weathering. Towards the end of the video, I will also share what I consider the lessons that I learned from this project. So if you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to paint scenic bases, or how to apply pigments to your bases, among other things, this video is for you. So about a month ago, I received a very generous care package from MicroArt Studios, which included several 40 and 50 mm bases, which as you can see, I'm getting ready for priming. A couple of 60 mm, which I'm going to use for two contemptors, and three basin sets, which I'll cover in a separate video, as well as the 100 mm base, for the Telemond Dreadnought, which is what this video is about. I'm going to use all of these bases for my Custodes, or Custodes, army, which right now consists of, well, two models, but which hopefully you will see me grow over the course of the next few months and videos. Now I want to make two things clear from the outset. First, I have been a regular customer of MicroArt Studios since 2013, many years before I started the channel, and I can wholeheartedly recommend their products to anyone based on that experience. Secondly, this is not a paid promotion, and any opinions regarding these spaces are exclusively my own. So with that out of the way, let's start, shall we? This is the base after priming. As always, I primed it with AK Black Primer with Microfiller and allowed it to dry for 24 hours. As you can see, this base is really beautiful and it has a lot of detail, particularly on those floor tiles. For the base coat, I went with AK Silver Grau, or Silver Grey in English, thinned around 50% with lacquer thinner. This mix I sprayed at around 20 psi. As you can see, I went section by section, going very easy on the trigger, with the idea of building opacity gradually. Even though this silver is quite a bright color, close to white, thanks to it being a lacquer paint, I got absolutely no dry tip or clogging in the entire process. Now, if you're in a hurry, you could go more aggressive, of course, but this slow and purposeful airbrush technique, pun intended, has become second nature for me. So, this is the base now with the main color done, which I let dry for about 20 minutes before the next step. With the light gray paint done, I mask it all off in order to apply a second color to the concentric rings around the floor tiles. For these, I chose Steingrau, or Stone Grey, also by AK, which is a brownish kind of grey. Now, I knew there wouldn't be a lot of contrast between these two colors, but this was a deliberate choice. First of all, I've often used them together in other bases, and I quite like the effect, and secondly, my intention from the get-go was to convey realism rather than extreme contrast. As you know, this channel is all about realism, and besides, there is plenty of contrast with the custodes themselves. A more muted base, I thought, complemented the shiny red and gold nicely. As usual, there were some bits that I forgot, so I had to mask around them again and airbrush them. After I had already cleaned my airbrush, in spite of that minor setback, I was happy with the effect and ready for the next steps. With both colors for the stone tiles ready, it was time to take care of the gravel, the dirt and the candles. The former I just painted black by hand. With the candles I tried to paint them by hand as well, using a Vallejo model air color, but that looked pretty terrible. Therefore I ended up going over it with Mr. Color Gloss White, which I had just bought and was really excited to try. As you can see, however, I was getting a lot of sputtering, which is highly unusual with lacquer paints. The problem was that I hadn't cleaned my airbrush properly. Thankfully, the end result was pretty good nonetheless. After that, I decided to dry brush the gravel with Ammo Dry Brush Earth. I had run out of clean brushes at that point, and my choice of brush here was not the best. If you can, use a short bristled one instead. In any case, this earth color works fairly well over a matte black. This concluded all painting as such. Time for the crux of the matter. Weathering. If you're enjoying this video, guys, consider joining the Race for Terra YouTube membership. 
which starts at only 1 euro a month. If you join the mid or top tiers, you will have access to ad-free, exclusive members only videos, among other things. Check out the other perks. Before any weathering was done, I applied a generous coat of Tamiya X22 Clear with the airbrush and I let that dry for a couple of hours. Remember, applying a gloss varnish before weathering is always a good idea. For my washes, I chose two oils and one enamel this time. I would use the oils with the floor tiles and the enamel effect for the gravel and dirt. I shook all three washes vigorously, they all have agitator bulbs by the way, and then I decanted them neat into paint wells. <laughs> I had to read that three times because I was laughing every time. Anyway, unintentional puns aside, the first was the aptly named Dark Stains, which I applied to all the silver grey areas. At the start I actually applied it excessively carefully, as if this were a pin wash. Force of habit. The plan, however, was to do a sludge wash instead, and cover the entire surface. Now this looked very messy, but I had a trick up my sleeve, as you will see. With that done, I turned to the second oil wash, grease, which I applied to all stone grey areas, and also to the candles. Like I said before, I wasn't really worried about the lack of contrast between the two greys. I also knew that using different washes would help them stand out. Lastly, I started to apply the Ammo Dark Mud Enamel to all the gravel and dirt areas. Since this is pretty thick, I dampened my brush with thinner every now and then, but it did not thin the wash itself. And now for the secret weapon, these wet-shaped makeup sponges. This is 4 hours after I had applied all the washes, which I knew would be the sweet spot when it came to blending them. As you can see, this removes all the excess oil immediately, but leaves the grey slightly tinted and the recesses all shaded. Unlike with cotton buds, which I'm never ever using again, there are no strands or residue to worry about, and unlike with a brush, I didn't have to risk making a mess by reactivating the oils with thinner. The resulting effect is also subtle and semi-transparent without any ugly tight marks, far superior to any acrylic wash. It was now time for pigments. For this I chose my favorite Europe Earth by Ammo. As always, I first um, sprinkled the pigments onto the base, so to speak, using a makeup brush, then using a stubbier one I started to stipple the pigments, fixing them into place. As you do this, it always looks like a mess, but don't let that fool you. When I was done, I picked up a fan brush and removed some of the excess pigment. After that, I applied a coat of matte varnish off camera and got ready to do some light dry brushing on the floor tiles, this time with white. As you can see, the pigments have done their job but in a much more subtle way than it seemed earlier. Therefore, it was time for a second pass. Since the surface was now matte, I knew the pigments would stick a lot more, so I didn't want to go absolutely crazy either. Instead of using a pigment fixer, as I would normally do, I picked up the Scale 75 grease again and decided to apply that generously all over the place. This oil wash would act as my fixer while at the same time ensuring that I didn't lose any of the shading in the recesses. This was the result 24 hours later, with everything nice, dry and settled. As you can see, using the oil wash as a pigment fixer worked really nicely. As a finishing touch, I decided to create some more contrast by applying dry oils with my oil brushers. I applied the oil paint neat, directly from the applicator, and then stippled it into place with a stubby makeup brush. This created the impression of grime accumulated in between tiles and so on, which I quite liked. Then I removed some of the excess with a sponge, and the base was done. It just had to dry for a bit, and then it needed another coat of matte varnish. Job done. So what did I learn with this project? Well, firstly, it just confirmed 
that I really enjoy painting scenic bases and dioramas. In the last few months, I've painted several of these. For example, the bases of these three dreadnoughts. A 16mm base for this Death Guard Contemptor, an 18mm one for this Leviathan, and of course our Telemon base. Now the thing is, the Telemon base was actually quite time consuming. It took me 2 hours and 30 minutes from start to finish. For most people that would be too much, I guess. However, I really enjoyed every step and painting this huge base never felt like a chore. I think the reason for that is that I always approach each scenic base as a model in itself, rather than as some kind of hoop that I need to reluctantly go through in order to get my army ready. Like any wargamer, I've done my share of quick and often shoddy pacing, don't get me wrong. But if I look back at my beginnings as hobbyist, which were with Warhammer Fantasy, it was when I discovered resin bases years ago by Micro Art Studios, as it happens, and that's the truth, that my basing game started to improve. Now, I really don't think that resin bases are a shortcut for lazy people, which I hear a lot out there. Instead, I think they give you a second model to focus your creative energies on. But anyway, that is about enough philosophy for one day. Before I let you go, I would like to thank all of my YouTube members, and in particular, our new members this month, namely Tommy Knox, Shane Reeves Audio, Ivan, Bill Weir, Dustin Johnson, Original T100, and Joe Sanchez. Your generous support keeps me stocked with consumables every month, like Lacquer Thinner, and that's no joke, and it means a lot to me. That is all for now from me, folks, but remember, keep it up and weather it out.